<clears throat> Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Verse 21, and then we're going to go back up to start around 12 where we ended off last Sunday before last, okay? <clears throat> Romans 12 and 21. We're going to be talking again about commands to the church. Things that Christ calls us to do and ways we should act. Romans chapter 12 verse 21. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Then flip over with me to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 9 and verse 50. Mark 9 and 50. Salt is good. Uh, I'm a believer in that. I'm not going to try to tell you folks that the doctor's told not to eat salt. But I love salt. And salt is good. It's right there, isn't it? But if the salt have lost his saltiness, wherewith will you season it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another. Father, I pray that you touch us this morning. Let your word speak to our heart the things that are needed. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. To have peace one with another, we must have the salt, the love, the seasoning of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Let's, let's stop just one minute. I, I'm sorry, I, I'm getting old and forgetful. But Brother Bobby and Sister Karen had to leave, and Sister Karen's having those old awful cramps again. And let's lift her up in prayer right now. The devil is just trying to fight in so many different ways. But these are such precious, precious folks of ours and we just love them so much. And let's just pray for them right now. Father, Lord, right now I ask that you reach down and touch Sister Karen. Lord, you know what is going on, God, what, what causes those things. I know that I serve a God who made us and a God that is able to heal us. Right now, reach down and bring healing, bring comfort to her and Bobby. Lift them up, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Can you say praise the Lord? To live at peace. This morning in the Sunday school lesson, I, I started to speak up and I thought, well, I'm going to preach my sermon before I ever get up to preach if I'm not careful. To have peace with people around us. A lot of people would say that when Paul writes the book of Romans in, in his writings, Christ, if you look, Paul is always centered upon focusing upon Christ and the cross. I've told you I don't know how many times in yourself you cannot live right. A lot of people say that Paul and James oppose one another. When you read the book of James, he begins to tell you things that you should do and ways you should not do and ways that you should not act. They are not opposed one to another. They complement one another. In essence, you see, if your focus is upon Christ and His cross, the results... Oh, they're supposed to be results? Yeah. If you have true faith in Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there is a change. There is a difference. Those old things pass away and all things become new again. And then there is results, there is fruits that come forth in your life. This is what these commands are about. Not that we're trying to be good in ourselves or set down a certain standard of rules or regulations. It is when our focus is upon Christ, this will be the result. This is showing us if our focus is right or not according to the things that are in our life. Verse 12 I read to you last week. I'll, we, we quit there. I'll read it again quickly and we'll go on rejoicing in hope. Thank God we have hope to rejoice in patient. In tribulation, that's not a word we like to talk about. I hit on it last Sunday, I won't hit on it this Sunday a whole lot, but patient in tribulation. 
continue an instant in prayer. That means everywhere we go, everything we're doing, we are to continue in prayer. We're to keep a prayer on our heart and in our lives. And we are to walk by the Spirit of God continually, instant in prayer. I'm glad Daniel, and I'm sure Daniel is too, didn't have to get back acquainted with God when they throwed him in the lion's den. Aren't you? I mean, just think about it. It's no time to say, hey, I need to get things right before God as you're going down towards the lines. So continually instant in prayer. Verse 13, listen, and I'll try to hurry this morning. Distributing to the necessity of the saints given to hospitality. You see, we are to have a heart that is a heart of giving. To be willing to give unto others, especially to those who are of a household of faith. We as a body of believers, we as a church, are to love one another. And we are to care one for another. We are to practice hospitality. We are to have that that action of kindness and of love to be hospitable one to another. Not to be envious and nitpicking and trying to tear down and destroy. That's not God. Our focus is not on the cross. If that is in our lives, we are to love and to care one for another and be willing to give one to another. Verse 14. We're not to be like children a lot of times when they grab something and say, that's mine. We're to share, we're to love, we're to be giving. Let me go on. Verse 14, bless them, Uh uh-oh. Now we could spend a long time right here, but we're not going to. Bless them which persecute you. Bless. (coughs) Bless and curse not. Do good to those who persecute you. We, that, that just don't come easy to the flesh, does it? When somebody does us wrong, we want to double up and do them double wrong. When someone harms us, persecutes us, comes against us, we want to get back even with them. But as you set out to get even with them, you are going to destroy your testimony... You're going to destroy your walk with Christ. You're going to allow a root of bitterness to get down into your heart. I use this term and it's not always easy. Believe me, I live in the same world that you live in. But we need to let it be like water on a duck's back and let it just roll right on off. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will help us to do those things to be good to those who persecute us. I have seen it time and time and time again when those who would do you wrong, you do them good and it stirs something in their heart and it stirs something in their lives. When we, those who would harm us and those who would try to do wrong and to destroy our name, to love them and to pray for them. The songwriter says it like this, if you're going to talk about me, talk about me down on my knees. It's real easy when somebody calls up on the phone or they say, have you heard? I got quiet then, didn't it? Have you heard? No, I've not heard and I'm probably better off for it. It's real easy. You know, if we're not careful, we begin to rejoice in evil. We begin to rejoice in the fact that that brother or sister has fallen and that we feel like we're better or step up above them. That's not Christ. That's not Christian love. I'm not better than anybody else. I'm not higher, and thank God I'm not lower than anybody else at the foot of the cross. Oh, hallelujah. I'm a child of Almighty God. And if they believe in Jesus Christ, they're a child of Almighty God. And we need to pray for them and lift them up. Those who would try to do us wrong. Now let me throw this in and it won't take long. And and there's another verse in in a moment that comes right along with this. Let, Let me just wait till we get down to that verse. 
He tells us in verse 15, Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. We are supposed to be people who lift up one another. Have you ever seen, them, seen those people, and, and let me just use an illustration, you get something new, whether it be a car or a bicycle or a new notebook or wh- whatever it might be, something new and you're really thankful for it. And they come along and they see you got something new and envy and jealousy begins to stir in their heart. And they find something somewhere. Well, I don't like that color. Didn't ask you to like it. It's not yours. Amen? But they find some way of tearing it down. That's not the way we as children of God should be. When I see my brother or my sister blessed with something, I rejoice with them. Pastor David, I'm thankful that God is pouring blessings upon them. I'm thankful that God is helping them to receive these things. And then when my brother or my sister is going through trials and circumstances, I weep and I have compassion with them. I have a problem with people that cannot have compassion and a care for someone that is suffering and going through things. I know sometimes... I say these words myself and the Holy Ghost convicts me. Can I be honest? Can I get where we live? I say they brought it upon themselves. And it's true. But then the Holy Ghost stirs in my heart and says, Yeah, but were it but for the grace of God, so you would have too. To weep, to have compassion to have care one for another, to weep when my brother or my sister weeps, to care for them, to reach out to them, to pray for them, and to rejoice as they rejoice. That's what the body of Christ is all about. Verse 16, listen to this, Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, But condescend to man of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Think about this. Be of the same mind. Live in harmony. Be of one accord. We we could preach here for a long time. We could get down into some places where we all live. But it is just so plain and simple. Mind not high things. Don't be over ambitious to be rich and powerful. Someone once said, I want just a little more. We were talking the other day about being humble or money ruling your life. And I used this term just to see if the person would catch on. I said, well, I, I'm not like that. I want just a little more money than I can spend. Sounds humble, don't it, till you listen to it all the way through. But we want power, we want money, we want things. And you know what happens? Things began to own us. Those ambitions began to rule us. Those things, we began to mind high things. And we forget about the things of God. What greater treasure can we ever possess or ever have than to know Christ Jesus is in my heart and in my life. And to know one of these days, Brother Brandon, I'm going to leave this old world, going to leave this old flesh, and I'm going to take on a new body, oh hallelujah, and a mansion that he has prepared for me. Condescend. Be humble. Don't put on a parade. You ever seen people like put on a parade? You ever seen those who are proud in their own selves? He tells us to be humble. Now humbleness is a funny thing. I told you this the other day that a professor told me this one time and it took me a while to catch on to what he was saying but humbleness is a funny thing. When we think we have obtained humbleness, we'll all at once lose it. I'm no better than anybody else. I'm nothing outside of the grace of God. Let us never lose that attitude. Be not wise in your own conceits. Self-conceited and vain. 
to be self-conceited and to be vain, to think I know the best way. You know the best way to get anywhere with God is come to Him and say, God, I really don't know what I need. I see people go to God with a grocery list and God, I need this, I need this, I need that. I need... And most of that they really don't need. And God knows it. But what I like to do, I like to go before God and I say, God, you know the circumstances, you know the situation, you know what I need. Work in my life. Because I don't know. And I'm willing to admit I don't know the answer. But He does. And he is able to not be wise. Then he gives us some commands about living in this world. Those are commands that went over Sunday before last and then today about in the church. These are commands about our conduct, our conduct to the world. Verse 17. Listen. Again, goes along with the verse I was talking about a while ago, verse 14. Recompense, give back, in other words, don't give back, to no, ma- to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all man. Never pay back evil. Never pay back evil. When somebody does you wrong, you will never get ahead by doing them wrong back. This, to be honest, to be honest one with another. I heard a man once say about never pay back evil for evil. Now it's hard. I'm not telling you it's not. I'm telling you only by keeping your focus on the cross and allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life is the only way that you'll be able to not recompense evil for evil. But let me mention this, and as we get in further into the book of Romans, about chapter 16, I'll get into this more. But let me quickly mention this this morning, to never pay back evil. I do not believe God expects us to be a doormat. Amen? Amen. Stuart Hamilton, he wrote the song, This Old House, and several other songs. When he came, I heard his testimony. I heard him testifying one day and telling about his life. When he first came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, he had heard Billy Graham and he'd been listening to his crusades. And I think maybe he had been to that crusade. And he called Billy Graham up and he said, Billy, I want you to come over and I want you to pray with me and pray for me. I want to be saved. And Billy Graham said, I'm not coming to pray for you or with you. He said, what do you mean? He said, if I come over there, I know the attitude that you have right now, and you're going to think Billy Graham saved you. And Billy Graham can save nobody. He told him the plan of salvation, explained to him how he could be saved, and Stuart Hamilton that night came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, wrote some of the most beautiful Christian songs that there ever was. But he said this, and this this is one of the things that he went by. He said, I am all right when a man walks on me. But he says when he stops to wipe his feet, I'm going to get up and try to do something. I kind of like that. That stuck with me, didn't it, you? So allow the love of Jesus Christ to shine in you. And when someone does evil, do good back to them. And go on and leave it alone. You see, there is the problem a lot of times. We won't leave it in God's hands. And I'll mention about that in a moment. Be honest. Be honest in all our dealings. Be honest in all our things. And all we do, we should be honest. To be honest. To be straight in this world. If you're not honest with man, don't go witnessing to man. If you can't be honest with your fellow brother or those in the world, don't think you're going to reach them. Be honest one with another. And then he goes on. If it be possible, and I like this, listen. It goes back to what I was just saying. If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceable with all men. We were talking about living peaceable in Sunday school class this morning. Someone said their neighbor (laughs) was hard to to live peaceful with. I understand that. But did you hear what he said? God doesn't call us to do more 
than what we can? Listen to what, if it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceable with all men. Allow the salt that is in you to reach the world. I heard of this minister who was handing out gospel tracts and he came to this gentleman who, who was uneducated, did not know how to read, and the minister didn't know that, but he handed him the tract. The man handed him the tract back and said, I can't read your tract. But he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll watch your tracks. What about that? Watch your tracks. People are looking at your life. People are watching you live at peace as much as lies possible with all men. Keep your eyes looking unto the Lord and not unto you and know that He will make a way. Verse 19, listen. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Boy, I'm going to show them, are you? Are you really? Are you going to show them or are you going to mess up? Well, I, I'm going to take it to them. Are you really? Or are you going to mess up? Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Oh my. Well, that's just the way I am. Well, God needs to change the way you are. And He would if you'd give it to Him. I'm on my toes more than I am anybody's. Do not give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay. You see, if we leave it in God's hand, He does it best anyway. I've talked with people through the years and they be having problems and situations and circumstances and we all have them. You might think yours is unique and nobody else in the church has those problems. Let me just clear that up. I could go pew by pew by pew by pew and person by person and we all have problems. I'm reminded I thought there was this one particular family that was just perfect. I can't get into great detail. I thought they had no problems whatsoever in this world. And in my eyes, it wasn't my family. <laughs> and in my eyes, they were perfect. And one day, that was burnt. When one comment was made, and I thought, oh yeah, they've got drama too. Every family, every situation has it. But the more we mess with it, I told I don't know how many people this, and they won't listen. They won't catch on until after they keep messing with it and they keep messing with it and they keep messing with it and then they catch on. Leave it alone. Leave it in God's hands. Leave it alone. I've been doing jobs saying I'm not that great with... When, when I pick up tools, Mary Jane, well, here lately she helps me some, but most of the time, used to, she'd try to run somewhere and get away when I get a hold of a tool because I'm going to mess it up. And she'll tell me constantly which makes it worse, don't try to make it perfect. If you get it working, leave it alone. What really aggravates me, she's right. She's right. Because the more you mess with it, you're painting, and the more you rub that paint, the more you smear it, the thinner it gets. But we think we've got to do it one more swipe. And we mess, leave it alone! Leave it in God. But by the dog, they've done this and they've said that. And Leave it alone. The more you mess with it, the more you stir it, the worse it's going to get. Well, Brother Doug, we've got to get together. Who says you've got to get together? Oh, now, boy, that, that rubs something wrong right there. Who says you got to? Where's it at in it? You love them, you leave it alone, and you go on. Amen? Hmm. You can meet me at the church and we'll talk about it. <laughs> Leave it in God's hands. Leave it alone. Verse 20, Therefore if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. We are to treat our enemies with goodness. We are to treat our enemies with love. We are to love those who would persecute us and do us wrong. The last verse that I read to you, and I want to mention it to you again, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. You see, evil, if we're not careful, will overtake us. But 
instead of being overcome with evil, we are to overcome evil with good. Commands. Things, results that should be working in our lives as a child of God. Why do we want these things to so work in our lives? So that we can reach a lost and a dying world that is headed for hell. So that we can be the church. I believe with all my heart God has a work for this church. I believe with all my heart He's raising us up. I believe with all my heart he desires to fill with his spirit and with his power and with his presence as we've never had before in this church. But let the results so show in our lives that Christ lives and reigns in our hearts. Father, I thank you this morning for your great love. I thank you, Lord, for reminding us this morning. I thank you this morning, Lord, for touching my heart and opening my eyes in areas that I need more grace, more of your compassion, that my focus needs to be greater upon you in these areas. And then, Lord, the results will be what you would have. Raise us up as a church as you never have before. Lord, I pray for the congregation this morning as we're bowed in your presence just now. You know how the devil would love to destroy and would love to tear each one down. But right now, Lord, I ask that you just lift up. I pray, God, that a hedge of your love and of your grace and of your mercy and of your goodness would surround each one of us, Lord. And help us to walk in your love, to walk in your compassion, to walk in your goodness and when evil would come trying to overcome us help us by your grace and your mercy and your goodness overcome that evil in our lives Christ's name